Welcome to Beyond the Workout with your host, Eric Dunstan. Hello, everyone. This is Coach E. I just want you to know that anything you hear on Beyond the Workout podcast is just information only. It is not a diagnosis for your issues. So anything you hear for well-being, nutrition, fitness, exercise, any of those things, just take it that way as information. If you need help for a specific situation, please seek a professional. See your doctor, see a professional personal trainer, and they will diagnose your issues and they will take care of you. All right, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another show of Beyond the Workout. It is me, Coach E, Eric Dunstan, and I know, I know, it's been probably about a few weeks since I've come on and did a show for you all, and the reason being is I um, I got involved with learning artificial intelligence um, called AI. It's fascinating. It's like the start of the internet, learning the internet again, and just some new technology here. And um, I took a course, I think it was an eight week course. Um, so right after, in, in, in between I was doing, I did a couple of shows, but I got so into AI that it kind of slowed me on my path for doing my podcast, but I'm here, I'm here. I'm, I'm gonna continually, continuously try to be consistent about it. Uh, it just was a little change there. so. Uh, The focus on this uh, episode is geared toward um, tackling seven common misconceptions for men over the age of 50 when it comes to exercise and fitness. And I'm not just going to talk about the misconceptions, but I'm also going to tell you, you know, how you can overcome those misconceptions. And you just think about, do any of these resonate with you? Now, I I just chose seven, but there could be more, um, and I'm sure there are more. And then not all of them are going to uh, be something that resonate with you, but maybe one or two do, and you can see what you should do about it. So I'm a fitness coach, and I'm a, a certified uh, fitness coach, and I like to talk fitness, and I like to talk things not just in the gym, but outside the gym when it comes to like nutrition, uh things you can do outside of fitness that can keep you active. And hopefully this can speak to you men out there over 50 and to really reconsider doing your exercise, why you should do your exercise and why you should not have any excuses. And and, and you ladies out there, if you have men that are your uh, boyfriend, uh, your, your husband that could really use this, share this with them. You know, this might be a show that can kickstart their fitness and uh, get them healthy for this year. So let's go ahead and jump right into misconception number one. It's too late to start exercising. Well, this couldn't be further from the truth. Because regardless of your age or fitness level, you know, it's never too late to start. There are many who have started in their 50s. Some have started in their 60s. And when you start, you can actually experience the benefits and uh, of exercise because studies have shown that individuals over 50 can still see improvements in their strength, their endurance, their balance, their cognitive performance through doing regular physical activity. So uh, what are some of the things that we can do to overcome that common misconception. I always recommend you start with something that's easy to do, a low impact exercise. You can walk, you can swim, you can do cycling, bicycling, but aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise. But if you're just starting, let's go with the moderate exercise and then you know build up from there. So what we're going to, what I wanted to mention with that, um, with what are some of the workouts, even though I mentioned like um, you can walk, some of the things I've always recommended is like do maybe 15 minutes of walking, 
like I would say do like 15 minutes one way and come back 15 minutes. That gives you 30 minutes of walking. And let's just say you did 30 minutes of walking um, every day, just for five days. That's your 150. I think that's your 150 right there. Um, so what I wanted to really emphasize is do 30 minutes of walking instead of two hours sitting on that couch or recliner. And those two hours, you might be just sitting there eating bad, watching something that is not beneficial for you for exercise wise because you're sitting there. Uh, but use that time that you would be sitting there for two hours, take 30 minutes of that and go for a walk. Uh, you can also mix it up by doing some bike riding or swimming. Now, one thing I would recommend is trying this walk three days a week, go out biking three days a week, and then maybe one day of swimming and mix that all up based on what is best for you and what you like. And that's, that gives you seven days of exercise and it's not that hard. So misconception number two, I can't get strong. Well, this might be true for some, but it might not be true for all. And you know, it is known that men over 50, you might be weaker now, but let's just say you started doing a strength exercise program. You will notice your strength increasing. It might not increase like when you were younger, but you're going to see some form of increase as you use uh, resistance, uh, weight training, exercise, strength training, exercise you're going to see. And uh, it is recommended to do two to three days of, of uh, or two to, two to three times a week of resistance training. And you focusing on exercises that are more compound type exercises, like um, that work multiple muscle groups. Um, but you know, I, I, I hear that sometimes from from um, the fitness world to do. They call them multi joint exercises, meaning you give you an example of like what multi joint. It's like you might do a bicep curl to a shoulder press and then right into a tricep extension. Come back down to bicep. You know, that's fine. I, I do recommend before you do anything like that, if you're if you haven't been into exercising in a while or you're new to it, let's start with just doing the basic moves. And I always give six basic moves that I recommend when you're starting out, because this is the foundation moves. It's like the chest press, the the barbell, dumbbell row, the shoulder press, the bicep curl, the tricep extension, and the squat, and then incorporate some core exercise in there, like some crunches or planks. And I think I, get, I hit six, but you can count if I didn't hit six. I'm almost certain I did because I said the chest, the back, the shoulders, the biceps, the triceps, and the legs. That's six. Then I threw core in there, which would be seven. So, I, you know, something I would recommend you do is don't go all out and join a gym. Just get a simple dumbbell set. And one I recommend it is a dumbbell where you can select the weights and it takes up less space. I'll show you a picture right here. It's the bow flex. Dumbbells, the 552s go from five pounds to 52 and a half pounds. And you can go use uh, the, I think they're called the 1090s. They go from 10 pounds. I'll show a picture here. The 1090s, they go from 10 pounds all the way to 90 pounds. You know, I, I spent uh, years with just the 552s at home, but I was also going to the gym. But when the pandemic hit, I was using my 552s almost regularly. And then I felt I was getting strong enough to graduate to the 1090. So you can really do a lot with just the 552 uh, dumbbells. And, you know, I have a, a code you can use like, if you want to get you a, a pair and get the stand with it. Because taking those off the floor is not fun. You get a stand with it. I put mine in the closet. They, they're both next to it in a walk-in closet in the guest room. It doesn't take up too much space. I would say use it that way. Get you some resistance bands. You can find a uh, 
value price resistance bands, you know, right there on Amazon. And do this work out two to three times a week. And I'm going to tell you, as a as a fitness trainer, I'm going to tell you do it three times a week. So, like, for example, we go three times a week. I would say do, uh, let's break this down. Day one will be upper body. You will work your chest, your back, and your shoulders. So it's like a chest press. Oh, get a bench also. Get a foldable bench. I'm, I'm trying to build your, your little home gym there. But you will use it if you just, you know, stick to a routine or have someone to guide you to get started. But uh, you would do a chest press, back rows, shoulder press on day one. And, you know, you can add in biceps and triceps you know, in, in, in between that. And then day two, I would do your lower body. I would do the core, uh, the core, do your core, like your crunches, sit-ups, and planks. And then do your legs, your squats, your heel raises to hit your calves. And, of course, like I said, hit the, hit the abs. Because uh, legs take a lot out of you. So that's why I say day two would be that. And then day three, which could be a surprise to your body, do the full body. You do your upper body and lower body together. And then and do some core and then rest for the rest of the week and start that back over. And the cool thing about it is you can um you can you can mix that up. So let's just say the next week comes, you just start with the leg workout, the lower body, and then the second day, the upper body, and then again third day full body. And then the following week, the third week, you start with the full butt and then maybe the upper butt and just mix it up. That makes it a little bit more, um, gives you a little bit more variety and makes it fun. Uh, but remember, exercise is not like uh, watching sports or anything. It's It can be a little boring. So uh, put on some good music. You could try on a TV show if you want and you could still be able to get your exercise in instead of sitting on that recliner and doing nothing. So in between those 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 um those days where you would do exercise, uh, like weight training for strength, in between, fill in those days with your walking, your biking, and your 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 swimming. Now biking, bike riding, um, is fun and adventurous and invigorating on good days. Walking is good, but try try to find a place that you you know where it's a good pool to to do your swimming. Okay, let's try to move along with this because I have seven of these I want to get through. So um, the common misconception number three, exercise is not safe for people with arthritis. Now, it doesn't mean that exercise is off limits for off limits for those individuals with arthritis. Uh, but through my studies, I have found that it can help manage the condition. Now, you, you don't want to um, do exercises that will accelerate the problem, but usually certain exercises will not accelerate uh, its development uh, if done under the guidance of a healthcare provider or a fitness professional. So don't try to go at it alone. Um, and remember, for joint pains like that, like your arthritis, your knee, your joint pains, Low impact exercises are good. Again, I'll go to the swimming, the cycling, some Tai Chi can be good, uh, can be beneficial. And listen, one thing I wanted to mention about that too, when I talk about biking, um, you know, some people I think have said it, it hurts their knees if they bike. Uh, walking on the treadmill can be a problem. I always recommend by using an elliptical machine. It's the, the machine with the handles on it and the pedals go in like an oval shape, you know, not just up and down. That's a little bit lower impact on the on the uh on the knees. I recommend that. And it's funny, they say even walking on a stairmaster has less impact on your knees. So if you were like go to a, a building and want to walk the stairs might have a little bit more impact on your your knees but if you got on the stairmaster where the steps are moving it's not an impact there uh that's my favorite uh, exercise uh piece of equipment so i'm gonna throw that in there use the stairmaster but one thing i highly recommend is that 
you all, if you have pain like that, if you suffer from arthritis, please get an assessment by your fitness trainer. Um, and so that you, that, so they know what your needs are. So you know what your needs are and your capabilities are. So I would do like an intake form to see what your limitations are, what your doctor says and say about that and work along with your doctor. That's how I would do it to make sure it's appropriate for you to do the moves. Then there are certain times where you're going to probably feel the pain and we have to do shift to something that's alternative. So that's why we would do the assessment because when I was in the gym, I thought everybody that came in was, you know, just like me, they can do every exercise out there. And literally people are broken. They've had body trauma. They've had been in car accidents. They've broken certain bones. They have dislocated joints. And I didn't realize the, this, the impact it has had on their bodies, especially as they, they've aged. Now, as I've aged, I've noticed but back then, I wasn't sure until I started assessing people and training them and realizing that they can't do certain things like they used to do when they were younger. So we get that assessment and then take that misconception of someone with arthritis and just throw it out the window uh, and then um, let you let it work really well with your trainer and your doctor. So. I say we got seven. Now we're going to go to number four. The fourth uh, common misconception is that strength training will will make me bulky and immobile. Well, do you want to be bulky? <laughs> I remember, I know women used to say that a lot, but we found out that strength training, when it's done properly, it won't lead to like necessarily to you being bulky. You have to you have to take certain supplements for that, by the way, too, or it won't lead to immobility. But it can be safe and effective for individuals like of all ages, and especially those of you over the age of fifty. The one thing you have to focus on is proper form. And now I've always focused on proper form when I was coming up in the bodybuilding world, and I rarely had any injuries because I always did a warm up set. So whatever exercise I was doing, I would warm up first. Like if it was the chest press, I would start off with a lighter weight, get the muscles warmed up, would do some push-ups, and then perform the exercise. So I really never had any connective tissue damage, like with the tendons and ligaments, because I've always prepared my body for the the uh, intensity that was coming. Um, so using proper form and gradually increasing the weight and intensity is the proper way to go. Uh, and then stretching is a good way to keep your mobility. But here's the key that a lot of people don't know that there are, um, also muscles, working muscles that can aid in mobility, uh, that can help you move, of course, mobility move better. A lot of people don't know that. They think, oh, let's stretch it, then I can move better. No, you can actually work stability muscles that will help you with your posture, your your walk and your gait when you're walking. Um, and uh, uh, with something else, uh, yeah, how you, you know, bend, how you stoop down, it gives you that flexibility. A lot of people don't know about these muscles that, that you can work and usually you would use what's called resistance loops. Let me show you a picture of what a resistance loop. Now I get my resistance loops from TRX. You can go to TRX.com and get you a pair using my code. Uh, I'll keep a link. You can go to my website and find the link as well. Now, of course you can find these on Amazon. You know, you might say, oh, it's better on Amazon, but get some good uh, fabric kind. And that's what I would recommend. So we're almost done. Let's go to uh, misconception number five. I shouldn't run anymore. Well, I have no problem with that, but <laughs> oh, really running can still be a beneficial exercise for cardiovascular health and mental clarity. Even for individuals over 50, as long as it's done appropriately and with proper 
guidance. So the best thing to do is start with shorter distances. Some sprints might be good and you can do at low impact surfaces and gradually increase the intensity and duration of your runs. So uh, you could also be like me and, and hate running and don't do it and feel no guilt for not doing it. <laughs> That's just a joke. I do. I would like to be able to run a little bit more, but Oof, that's always been a tough thing for me, and I've never been into it. But like I say, if you run on surfaces that are more giving, that's better. So it's, it's best, it's recommended to run on um, surfaces like a soft track. Some of these areas you can go to that have, have a soft track to can run up where they kind of give. Or you can run on a, a field, um, like in a, a soccer field, or football field, and run in circles, but just be careful for divots because I don't know if some of you know that I was running in a, a gym in their, in their, uh, in their yard, uh, for, um, more like crossfitting, like tire rolling, they did tire flipping in that yard and that yard had dips in. And so I was running in and I stepped in one of those dips and actually broke my leg, broke my right leg, broke my femur. And so if you're running, make sure it's on a nice field and that you know it pretty well and don't step in any divots. So just be careful when you go out there and, and stay hydrated, especially if you're wa running, doing anything outdoors, biking, uh, walking, running, just stay hydrated. So let's move along to common misconception number six. I hope these are resonating with you. Older athletes should avoid vigorous exercise. Well, older athletes. Well, that on the contrary, older individu individuals can benefit from vigorous exercise and high intensity training has been found to be beneficial for those over 50. We've been covering that over 50, over 50. You can do this. What it does is it helps you improve your fitness level and it reduces the risk of chronic conditions. So high intensity exercises, what are they? Uh, quick, simple, and from what I've noticed, uh, it's quick to recover from. Those are some some um, good high intensity exercises. Some of you know, like I'm I'm doing a program, and some of the ones that you can incorporate are called EMOMs. I don't know if you've ever heard of EMOMs, but EMOM stands for every minute on the minute and you could do three minutes five minutes you can do 10 minutes if you want i don't know who would do that because it's, it could be very high intent but you would do two to three exercises within a minute and hopefully less than 30 seconds or like between 30 and 45 seconds and the remaining part of that minute is your rest period so let's just say sometimes what I'll do is a chest press. Let's stick with chest press. I will do a dumbbell press and then do a dumbbell fly and then reverse my hands and do a dumbbell chest press. And so I'll try to do all three moves at five reps each in under between 30 and 45 seconds. So let's give, let me give you an example of that. Let's just say I did five chest presses turn around, did five chest flies, and then turn my hands and did five reverse presses. And then I sit up and I have a timer. I use this, what's called smart WOD means workout of the day. I use this timer, even on my headphones, I can hear it. And at a, at a point it will say halfway there, I meaning it's 30 seconds to go. And if I make those 15 reps, in less than 30 seconds, the next set, I will increase by one rep. So if I did the workout, did the exercise and it said halfway there as I sat up, that means the remaining 30 seconds is rest. Now let's just say I'm going, I do seven reps, seven, press seven, five, seven, reverse. And as I'm doing the flies, or I'm sorry, well, as I'm starting the reverse for seven, it says halfway there. And it takes me 15 seconds 
to get those last seven, that means I have 15 seconds of rest after that. So you see how the intensity can go up from EMOMs, but you can do anywhere from two, three, four exercises in that time period, but make sure you use uh, Be Wise. And, and the funny thing about what I've learned with doing those types of uh, exercises, those high intensity exercises, that recovery has been great. Like you don't have that delayed onset muscle soreness or called DOMS two days later. Sometimes I feel like I didn't even work out. So anyway, I'm not going to dwell on the high intensity exercises right now because I'm actually working on a program that I'm trying to get out uh, this year in 2024 that's going to incorporate doing emails. The program is called Better, Better uh, Fitness Program. And the reason it's called better, it doesn't mean it's better than any other ones because you can do a lot. There are a lot of great trainers out there who've come up with some great exercise program. But mine is better because each letter stands for what the what the program incorporates. And it's more like not better than, but it's do better, feel better, and be better look better is what the result of that extra, that program is for you. So it's not better than others. It's better for you to get better for yourself. That's what it's going to be incorporating. So we'll see. We'll talk more about that soon. I hope I can do a, maybe a podcast on it and, and encourage some of you all to join the program and try it out. So misconception number seven, it's probably too late to reap the benefits from exercise. Now, this almost sounds like number one, but uh, I looked these up, have the sources for this, and we're going to talk about this one because it says studies have shown that it's never too late to start realizing the benefits of exercise. And it is even for individuals in their 80s and 90s. There was a some program I was looking at, and I was thinking about taking their certification program, and what they focus on are people above 70 in their 80s and 90s and they had um i remember one picture it had of a woman she was um ice skating i think she was like 95 or something i don't know she was close to 100 and she was on one leg ice skate one leg and it was amazing they had people 100 years old doing these these fantastic exercises people in in their 80s, hiking or going on long excursions in other countries because they took care of their fitness level, so or their fitness um, uh, needs. And so don't worry about it. Uh, consistent physical activity, it can definitely improve your physical and mental well-being regardless of your age. So you can be buff, you can be defined, you can be cut, you can be ripped, however you want to say it, in your 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's all about believing in yourself and committing to it. That's what I know. That's what I hope. I know that you're worth the effort. You're worth getting there. And you will love how it makes you feel. And you will love how it makes you look. Isn't that nice? So those, that's what I wanted to go over for you all in this show, the common misconceptions. But before we leave, I want to pivot to two more points that are crucial and that we can't say enough about. And that's what you eat and getting your sleep. So I would love to tell you what the the the, um, the acronym BETTER stands for, but I'm going to hold off and, and hopefully share that with you in, uh, in my, in my, on my website. So you can really see why I went through the B-E-T-T and then what the E-R stands for. But it's going to be nice. So let's focus on pivots here. When it comes to your diet, you know, focus on balanced, nutrient-dense, rich uh, foods, rich in lean proteins. I recommend grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, the white meat portion of the chicken. I recommend fruits that are low glycemic, like apples and berries make sure it's all organic please um don't get that conventional stuff because they've used a lot of pesticides i did a show about that so you might want to go back and listen to that um get your vegetables get the dark leafy greens 
you know, I like your, uh, your cruciferous vegetables, you know, your, uh, your broccoli, um, your, uh, cauliflower. Uh, there's a nice recipe on, uh, making buffalo, uh, buffalo style, uh, buffalo flavored cauliflower. It's good. We like it. So, uh, get in your whole grains, your healthy fats, and your healthy fats are your olive oil, your avocado. You can put avocados on eggs and it tastes really good. Uh, all of this will help support your know, muscle recovery, bone health, and overall overall well-being. And then ensure that you're getting enough protein. Because uh, as older adults um, may require slightly more to maintain muscle mass. And generally, it's one gram per lean body weight. Now, if you don't know what that is, it, it means what is your weight without fat? So what is your body weight without fat? And there's a calculation you can do. You want to say, what is my lean body weight? And you could do a calculation. And I did that on a show too. I can't remember what show it was. Uh, to show it's not one gram per your your total body weight, but what is your body weight minus the fat? So let's just say you weigh 200 pounds or 250 pounds. Let's do it easier number for you. Let's say you weigh 300 pounds, you're 50% fat. Well, your lean body weight would be 150 pounds. What's well, half of that? And so you would calculate your grams, which will be 150 grams of protein um, because it's based on your lean body weight, not your total body weight. I hope that makes sense. So let's uh, round this out to try to finish this off because the last thing is an important thing, probably more important than your eating and your exercise. It's your sleep. Oh my goodness. How much we need sleep. Sleep is crucial for your health and fitness at any age. And it's always recommended to aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep each night. Oh, if you can't get that like me, I really can't make it to six hours almost. If you can't do that, try to nap during the day. Uh, because I know, I knew of someone who said they slept better when they did nap. I used to think you couldn't, but if your body's telling, wanting to go to take a rest or take a nap in during the day, don't fight it. Just take it. 20 minutes might be good enough to catch up on, um, the sleep that you missed out the night before. But the important is to establish a consistent sleep routine limit and by limiting screen time, you know, turn off that, um, that phone, that iPad, that uh, uh, that computer. Don't stare at it, even at TV <laughs> all night because that messes with your circadian rhythm. You uh, it, it will hold back for your release of melatonin, which helps you to go to sleep. Blah 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 blah. All of that stuff. So the the key is to re create a routine that limits things that will make you stay awake, that will have you worrying. Uh, try to develop a uh, sleep environment that helps your body to start to rest as you wind down. You know, I always recommend to have a um, a um, a um, time, a bedtime. Like if you say I'm gonna go to bed at ten o'clock, you're gonna start winding down like at from nine fifteen, nine thirty time. You'll wind down. That means start turning these devices off. Um, one thing I would recommend, uh, is journaling is good to do, uh, reading a book that's not on the device, um, electronic device, uh, listening to some nice music, soft music, relaxing music. And one thing I recommend when you're in bed to really help your body to relax, it's called box breathing. A lot of you have heard of that and box breathing is when you, um, you inhale for four seconds, you hold your breath for four seconds, and you exhale for four seconds, you hold your breath out for four seconds, and then you repeat the process. And you do that over and over again, and you will feel your body relax, your brain will relax, and then uh, next thing you know, you, you've fallen asleep. And just keep that up, uh, you know, your... Um, it will help you relax and, uh, and sleep better through the night because you did that. So in addition to exercise, diet, sleep, there are other ways to overcome common misconceptions and improve your overall health. 
So consider figuring out what those are for you. What works for you? Maybe these seven didn't even resonate with you. What are other things you can do? You know, can you, like I talked about journaling. I forgot to talk about meditation. Reading, when you read a book, make sure it's on something that's positive, that don't rouse you up. Um, and then just these practices that you can do to manage anxiety, improve your mood, and support your physical well-being. This is for all you over the age of 50, but this can really work for anyone. But I'm talking to you guys, these men out there over the age of 50 who might have these common misconceptions. So remember, it's never too late to start taking care of your health by addressing these common misconceptions. Like I say, not all of them probably resonate with you, uh, but make sure you understand what they are, implement a uh, well-rounded approach to exercise, nutrition, sleep, and stress manage. You can improve your physical and mental well-being and live your best life at 50 and beyond, <laughs> beyond the workout. That's a little pun on my, my show. So let's just say maybe you're out there, you're ready to get started when you're first in your, on your fitness journey. Well, I encourage you, like I've always encouraged on my shows, to visit my website, ericdunston.com. You can learn more about me. I want you to reach out to me, talk to me about doing a free one-on-one -on -one assessment so we can discuss if I'm the right fit to help you achieve your goals. So let's work together to go beyond the workout and unlock your full potential. How does that sound? Well, thanks for tuning in and uh, to Beyond the Workout, and I'll see you next time. This is Coach E signing out. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Workout podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please be sure to check me out at ericdunston.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physique Improvements. Take care, everyone.